Hey guys, okay, so I'm a little bit trying to figure out how I can do this where I don't have the camera off to the side because I always try to do that and I hate it because see, when this is in the center, I feel like I can look right directly at you. However, I have to move it over here so that I can see the question. So we're doing an ask me anything that I did because, I mean, you guys, I feel like absolute, I feel like hot garbage today. I'm, I, I can't lie. I feel so bad today. Um, I'm not taking my painkillers anymore and because um, I really don't need that high level of pain relief right now but I'm still in pain and I'm tired and my skin is broken out and I'm feeling like weepier than my usual self over the last week and I'm just I just I wanted to do something fun so on the Facebook group today I, I said go ahead and ask me anything and I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna post this to the channel or just to the group so if it's too long to post to the group, I'll have to post it to the channel. So it'll probably get posted on YouTube. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, so I said I would answer the questions that people asked me. So ask me anything. Okay, and the first one is, if you could choose a celebrity or a public figure to be, a, uh, to be an AMPS, an alternative menstrual product ambassador, who would you choose and why? And I thought about this for a second, and I really think that it would be the Surgeon General. The, the United States Surgeon General, because I think that if someone who supposedly represents the medical community in the United States made a statement about that, I think people would take it seriously, you know, preferably a male Surgeon General. I want to see a man with power stand up and, and in the medical community stand up and, and advocate for that. So some big wig in the American Medical Association or the American Surgeon General. That's who I'd like to see become a, a public figure who came out really strong with a public statement about the positive aspects of alternative menstrual products. The second question was about, um, uh, you know, my reasons for switching and um, what was my turning point and how does my daughter feel about it. Um, and whether or not she's pro cloth because she's never seen me use the other stuff or, or whether she's pro cloth because she made a choice. And um, I talked about um, if you go, um, because she said that the Beth is the person who asked me this question and she said that she'd seen most of my videos. The really older ones in my channel tend to not come up on the scroll anymore. So what you have to do is go to the YouTube channel and tell it to sort the videos from oldest to newest. And video number two and video number three tell the entire story about why I switched to cloth pads. And it had to do with severe skin reactions to disposables. That was the turning point, was when my husband looked at me and he said, we got to come up with something. And um, my friend Billy Joe, who is uh, around in the cloth community, um, and so hello again, Billy Joe. Uh, she's the one who introduced me to the concept of cloth, told me that they existed, etc., and in the end convinced me to try those. My daughter um, has chosen to use cloth because she thinks they're prettier than the ones I used to use. Um, she grew up watching me use disposables and being shushed out of the bathroom uh, if I was using or changing them, um, and now she sees me sewing them and enjoying the fabrics and that sort of thing, and she loves the way they look so much that she just and she's heard me talk about the, the benefits and the disadvantages through the YouTube channel. So um, she's made a somewhat educated decision on that, but of course she's biased because her mother uses cloth. Uh, so, and she is tremendously uh, curious about cups as well. And no, she doesn't have any hesitations because she has seen me washing my pads. She's seen what that looks like and it doesn't bother her at all. She's not squeamish about things. So, um, She's not at all daunted by the prospect of, of cleaning them or any of that. So, nope. I, I think she's pretty excited about cloth because they're prettier than the stuff all the other girls are going to be using. Okay, Kelly asked me, what is my favorite place I've ever lived? Dublin, Ireland. Uh, and if you could choose, where would you like to live now? Dublin, Ireland. Um, I have an emotional attachment there. I have friends there. Um... I loved it. I'm, I'm an American and so I don't know that I would ever choose to permanently leave the United States. Um, I, I, I love my country, but the, the time that I spent in Ireland, the landscape in Ireland, the culture in the Republic, and, and I didn't live in the North, I lived in the Republic down South. I lived in, in Dublin and 
So I, you know, and then having easy access, one of the things that I loved so much about living in Ireland is that for the first time in my life, I could afford to travel in Europe because traveling to Europe from the United States is something that really only wealthy people can do or people who save up for a long time for the airfare. Um, there goes my phone. So I'll be right back. But that's the answer to that one. Favorite place I've ever lived is Dublin. And if I had the opportunity to go back and live there again, I absolutely would. Kind of as a, a follow on to the Dublin question, if we were going to limit it to the United States, if I could live anywhere that I wanted to live in the United States, um, I would want to live near a university where I could get a PhD fellowship because I can't afford to get a PhD if I'm paying for it out of pocket. Um, and not to not to come across as being a, a braggart or anything, but I'm extraordinarily good. I'm an extraordinarily good student, and I have a, a pretty impressive record, and I am pretty good at writing um, historical research papers. And I really need in in my in my aspirations, I really need a PhD. I really need fluency in the German language to pursue the particular course of study I want to pursue. And, and I really need to get a program like that. And, and with my husband's career being the way it is, we move from place to place to place to place. And it's very, very difficult to, to join an academic program that, that will last for fully six years. Um, so I would like to live in a place near a university where I could get a PhD fellowship with a good history department. And I really wouldn't care much where that was. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that about covers where I'd like to live. Monica asked how Mr. Nix and I met, and that's kind of a two-parter, because we first started talking to each other, um, online. I met my husband on the internet. <laughs> um, but it was, um, I was 24, and I had always wanted to serve in the United States military, and from my previous life, uh, I made some life choices that, that were not good ones. And, and so up to that point in my life, I had not, I had basically cut off any opportunity for me to do that with the situation of my living and, and, and where I was and family situation and all that. So that was the first moment in my life where I was free to, to do that if I wanted to. And so I was talking to recruiters at the Marine Corps, uh, recruiting station and everything. And, and, um, so uh, I was getting online and I was talking to other people who were in the recruiting process. And it was back in the stone age of the internet, you know, back in the age of Yahoo chat, we're talking about 1999, late 99, early 2000. And so, I mean, it was very archaic according to like today's internet where it was just this huge group of people and he was in that same group of people. And I just found him funny and we began to chit chat. Um, there's a little bit of an age difference between us. So in the beginning, it was very strictly platonic. Uh, I had no romantic interest in him because when I found out how old he was, I just, I, I didn't look at him that way. Um, and um, I mean, we're not talking about 12 years or anything, but it was a big enough age difference at that age for me that I did not consider him a potential partner uh, at all. Um, but then we talked almost every day for over a year and that changed. We're gonna start skipping, so I'm gonna start a new clip to finish this. The first time I knew I was in trouble with him, you know, with the affection thing, was his computer died. He got like the blue screen of death or something back then. And so all of a sudden he wasn't there anymore. And it had never occurred to me, but I was devastated that he wasn't there and that I didn't get to talk to him for like a week. And unbeknownst to me, over where he was, because we were states and states away from each other, and um, he was scrambling to get a new computer as this young guy who had limited resources. He was scrambling to get a new computer <laughs> because he wanted to talk to me. And so very shortly after that, we decided that we needed to, to meet one another and, and, and see if this was dating potential. And uh, so he bought me a plane ticket to come out and visit him. And we had a weekend where we just, you know, I stayed in a hotel and he was living in a family home and, and we went and had dinner together and went to movies together and we decided, yep, 
this is it. So he, I was living in Denver, Colorado at the time. He moved to Denver and got a job in Denver. Uh, he was a reservist in the Marine Corps at the time, so he still had a civilian job. Um, and so he, he moved to Denver. He got a job in Denver, and we dated for two years, and then we got married, and that's how we met. Gina asked if what kind of sewing machine I use and if I've made my pad pattern available for tracing. I have a Brother CS6000i machine and you can buy them on Amazon. I think you can get them in Walmart periodically. Um, and the, the, the reason it's my machine is just because it it's the first machine I ever purchased and the reason I purchased it was because it had good reviews on Amazon and I could afford it. Um, it's on the lower end of the mid-range machines, and I couldn't afford anything bigger than that, plus I didn't even really know I was going to like sewing. And when I got the machine, it sat in a box literally for two years before I got it out and made anything with it. Uh, and then have I made my pattern available? Yes, it's in the file section here on the group, on the Facebook group. Um, I scanned a copy here on my printer and I have not been able to figure out how to, I uploaded the link to that file and several of the members of the group have changed, made some different lengths and different sizes of it, but the one that I uploaded is, is there in a compressed version and you can print it out and it is actually an image of the very brown paper one that I use. So if you print that out and cut it out, then you are using literally with the same Crayola markers on it and everything from you're using the exact same pattern I use. So yes, that's there, and it's in the file section on the Facebook group. Um, Heather asked, do you find telling, do you find yourself telling everyone who will listen about rumps? I tell coworkers, classmates, peoples in, shop, in shops, everyone, and they call me the crazy pad lady. <laughs> um, no, I think that the, the way that I get that need, because uh, I, I feel you on that. I, I feel a need to tell people. Um, when I have a friend who's having a baby, when I have a friend who talks to me about periods, when I have a friend who's in my home and, and, and it's an organic part of the conversation, then yes, I do bring it up, I do show it. Uh, there have been friends for whom I have just made some pads, handed them to them and said, here, I really like these, give them a try. So in that way, yes. And here we go with the skipping. Oh, good, it came back. Um, but no, I don't, I don't typically go around, like I don't approach strangers and talk to them about it, no. Um, I just, I've never felt obligated to. Sometimes, you know, I will be with someone and I will just feel an urge or it'll seem appropriate to the conversation and I bring it up every time when that happens. But I don't necessarily go around and, and, and advocate in public with people I don't know. I think that's what the, the channel ended up being for me. It was That was how I kind of got that urge out of my system is I'll get on YouTube and just tell anybody who will look at this video. So that's kind of how I do that. Lisette asked, what is my favorite food? That is so hard to answer. I love food. Um, I really, okay, I really like curry three-way in from Ireland, which is, okay, when you order Chinese takeout in Ireland, for some reason this is considered part of Chinese takeout, which in the United States just really doesn't translate because this is not usually something you see on an American Chinese takeaway menu. It's where they put chips, you know, large fries, um, for American big slabs of potatoes, they put chips on one side of the tin and they put rice on the other side of the tin and then they just smother the whole thing in curry gravy. It is so unhealthy. I mean, it is like a carb, it is a fat soaked carb fest and it is so good. <laughs> and, and I guess that's one of the foods I miss because I have not found anything even remotely like that in the United States. Um, I love Tex-Mex food. Like, um, I like to go to Chipotle, which is a, a chain here, and in uh, Dublin they have a, like a Chipotle knockoff called Tolteca that, that makes burritos with, with those kinds of things where you just pile it up with guacamole and black beans and rice and that sort of thing. Um, I Typically my favorite foods are Latino foods. Um, things like beans and rice, things like fried yuca root. If you've never had yuca, oh, it's really good. It's the big brown tubers that most Americans, they're like, what the heck is that? It's this large plant that looks like something that would grow in Arizona or California on top. It's very um, sword fern looking kind of plant, um, but the roots underneath are quite large and they're very potato-y in texture. And um, we had a housekeeper in Honduras um, and her name was Analia and she taught me to cook so many things. Um, so she taught me how to properly do refried beans and she taught me how to do um, 
it's ensalada de, de repollo. It's, 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 it's like a cabbage salad, but, but it's not just cabbage. You take, you take the cabbage and you take the fried yuca root and they put chicharrones on them, which is like the little fried pieces of pig fat, but I don't eat that. So she would get so irritated with me. She's like, it's not the same without the pig on it. You have to put the, you have to put, she'd fuss at me. <laughs> I loved her so much. You have no idea. But, um, but I find that Honoreño food is not, um, as spicy as Mexican food or Puerto Rican food or Cuban food. So I tend to like more spicy food than, you know, in the catracho food, but, um, but I like Latino foods. Those are usually my favorites. If it has comino and, 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 you know, rice and beans in it, I probably am going to think it is just awesome. So I would say those are probably my favorite foods. Curry three-way and pretty much anything in the Latino food lexicon that includes rice and beans and cumin. What hobbies do I have other than pads and quilting? Well, I crochet and I write, uh, I write a lot of different kinds of things. So I write a little something every day, like later today, I'm going to be working on something. And then, you know, I have a lot of different writing type deals that I, that I have going at once. Um, let's see. That about covers it. I, that's that's pretty much my hobby list. Is I like pads and quilting. I like to crochet. Um, I like to write. Um, and I don't really. I don't know if I can call riding my bicycle a hobby. It's just something I do every day. Um, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> that and reading books. I'm constant. I'm right now. I'm reading a biography of Woodrow Wilson, who is hands down my least favorite president in the history of the United States. Oh my gosh, that man was bad. He was just evil, but I'm, he's part of the, the time period that I'm kind of focused on. Um, he's at the tail end of the f period that I'm focused on right now. So I'm reading a biography of Woodrow Wilson and the author really loved him, which just irritates me to no end, but that's what I'm reading. So I read books, I write, I crochet, I sew pads and I quilt and I ride my bicycle. And, uh, I do, I also like to cook. What is my favorite flower? A royal iris. And I don't like the weird colors. I like a royal iris, not the bearded ones that look all orchidy. I like uh, a, just a royal iris, that deep purple with those brazen yellow stamens. I, they're just, there's something about them. They're just beautiful. That's my favorite. <laughs> I just, so I just read the one from Monica about having me put on a votive candle. <laughs> <laughs> Having grown up Roman Catholic, I'm going back and forth between laughing at that and going, oh my god, that's so blasphemous. I love you, Monica, so much. <laughs> no, I don't, um, I don't typically make up nicknames for my favorite YouTubers. Um, I, I usually do feel free to call them by their first name, though. So, like, for example, with the Missouri Star... Uh, quilt company. Now she's the only one that I give an honorific to because she's older than I am and I grew up in Arkansas and my ancestors would come up out of the grave and get me if I just called her Jenny because she is older than me. So um, I call her Miss Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. So it's Miss Jenny. But like um, Melanie Ham from her YouTube video channel, I just refer to her as Melanie. I refer to Brie as Brie. I refer to Bunny as Bunny. Um, I really want to know what Bunny's name is because I don't think her real name is Bunny. It might actually be Bunny. I, I don't know, but for some reason I have a tremendous curiosity to know if that's like the name on her birth certificate or not. But no, I don't usually come up with silly names for my favorite YouTubers. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have no idea. See, everybody always says, oh, Amy, you're so nice. It's like, dude, you see edited video of me. I think that a lot of you, this, this is the big secret about me. I, I'm a generally nice person. I'm not faking it or anything. This is pretty much me, but <laughs> I am not a saint. Oh my, you, if you heard the mouth on me, I think it would shock you. I really do. Okay, Jill asked me, you know, because we've moved all over because of the military and what are the places that we have been and which place was my favorite. Uh, gosh, uh, Indiana, California, um, Okinawa, Japan, um, Dublin, Ireland, Tegucigalpa, Honduras, um, and then North Carolina. Um, and of course we got to visit a lot of places while we were living in those places. Um, 
all the places we've been oh that would take way too long to list because we have been able you know while we were in Ireland I went to Poland I went to France I went to uh, the UK all over the UK except I never made it to Scotland I was all over Wales and England but I never made it up to Scotland and of course I spent a little bit of time in Northern Ireland so I was in that part of the UK as well we went to Belfast and kind of drove around up there um, my favorite place I've ever been ever been since I already talked about Dublin I'll say that visiting Normandy um, in France was a, a very, it was both an emotional experience, patriotically speaking, um, because we visited all of the landing beaches from D-Day, and that was tremendously emotional. And then the, the other part of it, because we have family members who were there, and um, Ashley being a United States Marine, you know, that was, for him, that was a big deal. Um, but also Normandy, as beautiful as Ireland is, and as much as I prefer it to pretty much any place else I've been on the earth outside of the United States, um, I've never seen anything like Normandy. Normandy is, I mean, it doesn't matter where you go in that region of France, it is like a postcard. Everything in Normandy is so unbelievably beautiful, and during the period of time when we were there, and I want to say we visited during the month of May, um, the rape seed fields uh, which are which have these bright yellow flowers they make cooking oil out of rape seeds um, but the rape seed fields were in full bloom and you've never seen that color of yellow in your life if, if you've never seen a field like that oh wow I I was I was blown away by the natural beauty of, of Normandy France so I guess that would be a good a good way to say that. And then, of course, the most moving place I have ever been was, um, uh, I have a, a friend who lives in Dublin. Uh, she, she lives and works there, um, but she is Polish. And um, she took me home to, to meet her parents in Krakow. And, and we stayed uh, with her father. Her, her mother was in the hospital and, and we went to visit them. And then after she spent some time with her parents, we went to Warsaw and, and saw some things there. But while we were in Krakow, we went to, uh, we, we left and, and I toured the camps. And, and that's, you know, so that's probably the emotion, most emotionally moving place as a history major and just as a human being that I've ever been was when we went to, we saw Auschwitz and we saw the Beer Canal and, 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 um, yeah. Julie asked, um, did learning to sew come from wanting to make pads or did you just feel like learning to sew? Well, originally I bought my sewing machine. The reason I bought my sewing machine is because when we lived in Tegucigalpa, um, I had an American friend who, who was also there. Um, her husband uh, had a different job than mine did, but he was also attached to the, the diplomatic community, diplomatic and federal law enforcement out there. And, um, she is an amazing seamstress. She made the most beautiful clothing for her children and you know she she's just she's a wizard with her sewing machine and and she told me that if I got a sewing machine she would show me how to use it so I bought a sewing machine. And then I was too scared to use it, so I, I bought my sewing machine and it's out in the box. So the first time I ever actually you know, took it out of the box with the intention of sitting down to use it was to make a cloth pad. So cloth pads really prompted me to sew rather than the other way around. Alexandria is awesome. This is like the best question ever. If I could choose only one for the rest of my life, would I be a donut or a corn dog? And I think the answer to that is obvious. I would be a Twinkie because nobody likes donuts and corn dogs better than Twinkies. Okay, so Alexandria also asked, if you were stranded on a desert island and could only have four pads with you, which would they be? And to show you. And the reason I picked these four is because they are my favorite overnight pads. And so I know that I could wear these four pads and they would always take care of my heavier days. So this is not necessarily my four favorite pads. These are just the four that I would take if I couldn't have any other pads. So it would be this lovely guy made by Alexandria. This 12 and a half inch yurt craft overnight. This 13 inch Annie Bell's Essentials uh, bamboo velour overnight. And we're not going anywhere without my fairy guy. He's a 12 inch uh, fairy overnight. So these are my four overnights. And the reason I would pick these is because they're heavy enough that even on my worst days, they could take care of me. So if these were the only ones I could, if I could only have four, carry the big ones. 
and then the, the other one was if you have a friend who said they would try reusables but only if you gave them which one, one of your pads which one would you give them and why this one because it's an Annie Bells, so I know that they would be happy with it. It's a heavy, so it would take care of their days. It's extraordinarily well made. There's a reason why Heather's my favorite. And um, because, look at it, it's gorgeous. It is not my very favorite, so I wouldn't have to cry to part with it. But it's one of my very favorites, because look, it's a Jay Wecker Frisch pattern, and how beautiful is that? She's gorgeous. What woman wouldn't want that? So if one of my girlfriends was changing to rumps, but only if I gave her one of my pads, pick this one, because I know she'd like it. That's why. And then what other reusable products do I use? I use cloth napkins. I don't use paper towels anymore, unless it's for something specific like soaking up dog pee, because I don't fancy putting that into the kitchen towels that I use on my surfaces. Now, Cadence doesn't have accidents in the house anymore, but once upon a time she did, and I would use paper towels for things of that nature, things that I really wanted to throw away. Um, because I use a lot of my cloth stuff on my food prep surfaces. Um, so um, I use towels instead of napkins. I use, uh, and, and paper towels. I have cloth napkins. I use um, tissue books to blow my nose. Um, now I still use Kleenex to blow my nose. Like if I'm having a flu, I don't have enough tissue books to, to accommodate that. But just, I don't carry tissue packets in my purse anymore. I carry tissue books. Um, and then of course menstrual cups. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but that I think that covers it. Okay, Lauren asked, what is your favorite slash most useful accessory for sewing? My cutting mat. Um, I don't know how I ever lived without it. Um, I asked for one for uh, Christmas, the year after I started making pads, and I started making pads it, during May, was the month that I started making pads. And then that following Christmas, I asked for a cutting mat, and my husband and my daughter went out and got me a nice little cutting mat from Walmart, I'm assuming. And I honestly don't know how I made, I don't know how I got by without it, because it has the grid for measuring, and it has, there's so many things that I do, I just, it, it's always there when I sew now, and I used to think that it was just so I could use my rotary cutter, but I don't really use my rotary cutter for anything except cutting strips or taking frayed edges off or straight cuts. Um, I use it more in quilting than I do in pad making, but every kind of sewing I do, that cutting mat is there because it's. I use it to measure things. Um, it's really easy to clean. I, I, it keeps the mess contained on the cutting mat, so then I can pick up the cutting mat and, and t do like this and dump all of the threads and lint and fuzz into the trash can afterwards. Cutting mat, hands down, is my favorite sewing accessory. And you can get some. They're not all that terribly expensive, so I highly recommend getting one if you don't have one. Also, it does protect my table, and I love my table. Um, let's see... TV or movies, coffee or tea, outdoorsy or indoors? Um, TV. I prefer TV to movies because nowadays, see, I used to be a huge movie fan, but nowadays, the way they're making television, they are doing, they've turned television series into like these, they've turned them into mini series basically. Like, look at Game of Thrones, look at Outlander, um, look at what they've done with Downton Abbey. They're taking things that, you know, because we've moved away from, sitcoms and you know dramas like LA Law and that kind of stuff you know I mean, there's nothing wrong with those television programs I was just never a big fan of TV I was a movie person but now they're making such quality television programming and there's more the universe is bigger in the television programs now than it is in the movies so I'm a TV person coffee or tea both uh, it depends on the mood outdoorsy or indoorsy both it depends on the mood, again. I love hiking, I love backpacking, I love sleeping outside in a sleeping bag with or without a tent. I love fishing, I love, I love you know, I love target practice with firearms outside. Um, I love being outside, I love, bi I ride my bicycle because I like being outside in the sunshine. Um, but I can also be quite a bit of a homebody. So, I mean, I've been known to look up on a Wednesday and be like, have I left the house this week? So uh, it's a little bit of both. I'm not one or the other on that. I'm being asked favorite topper, favorite core, favorite backer. Um, my favorite backer is probably Winpro fleece. I've never sewn with it myself because I find it difficult to obtain. I found a couple of places that I could purchase it from, but it is more expensive and I'm fine with anti-pill fleece. But if I was picking it, 
you know, if I was like, what's my very favorite backer? It's Winpro fleece. It tends to be really dense and really soft, and, and I really like it. Um, my favorite core, I mean, I sew with Zorb and flannel, and I really like that. It accommodates everything. I, I really like it. Um, some of my favorite pads have different kinds of cores in them. They have um, he super heavy bamboo fleece, super heavy organic bamboo fleece, um, and that works great. Um, but one of the things that I'm finding as my pads age is that the ones that have bamboo fleece for the core, they tend to stiffen up over time as opposed to staying floppy. Whereas the Zorb pads or the Zorb flannel mix pads, they stay really floppy and conforming. And, and so I think my favorite core is actually the Zorb products. And, and, and it doesn't matter whether you do like Zorb 1 mixed with flannel or if you choose one of the Zorb products like the Zorb dimples or the Zorb diamonds or whatever. Um, I just, I, I think Zorb is my favorite core material because over time, if anything, it gets floppier rather than stiffer. And I think over time, the, the bamboo uh, fleeces tend to get a little stiffer over time. That's one of the things I'm noticing is that some of my bamboo fleece core pads that are a year or so old are starting to get less floppy than, than I prefer. I like really soft floppy pads. And my favorite topper, uh, it depends. Um, my favorite toppers for sewing are the, the woven cotton because of all of the creative things that I can do with it and it's comfortable. Uh, but my favorite topper, the pads that I always reach for in my bucket first are the flannel topped. Um, and I think that's a combination of reasons. Number one, I just like the way flannel feels. And number two, I like flannel for my daily uh, tinkle oopsies. Um, so flannel just works better than cotton woven for me in that regard. So I tend to reach for my flannel pads first. So I'd probably have to say that flannel is my favorite topper. Okay, and I'm gonna stop this one because then the last question it might take me a minute and this is already starting to skip. I'm so tired of the skipping y'all, you have no idea. Okay, so Nicola asked, if you could go back 20 years, would you do anything different? Um, well, yeah, lots of stuff. There are lots of stupid things I've said that I wouldn't say. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of things that, you know, smoking for one, I would have quit smoking a lot sooner. Um, so, uh, gosh, 20 years ago, I was 20 years old. So, oh yeah, there's a lot of things I would do different. Um, some of those are personal, so I wouldn't go into it. But yeah, there, was, there are definitely, definitely some different life choices that I would make. But I'm, I'm happy where I ended up definitely happy where I ended up. I, I, I like my life. I like my family. I like the things that I've been able to do. And, um, you know, it, it really is, you know, everybody always says, oh, I wouldn't change a thing because then I wouldn't be the person I am. I think that's a load of BS because there's a lot of things that I would go back and do differently, um, knowing what the repercussions of those things were. Um, but, you know, but you can't and you really are kind of made by your mistakes as well as by your triumphs. So, I, I don't have like any significant serious regrets, you know, I've never done anything criminal that I feel bad about, I've never done anything, you know, so I, I haven't made any mistakes that I look back on and I'm just like, oh, but there are things that I did that were unwise and things that I did that were embarrassing and, and things that I did that negatively affected my long-term health. Um, that I think, yeah, if I could go back and change those things, absolutely. So my advice for people who are 20 years old right now, um, take your body seriously. Because right now, you can't imagine a time when your back hurts every day. You can't imagine a time when things are difficult for you, physically. Be good to your body. If you are a runner, stretch before you're, you run and don't run more than like, I mean, you know, if you're one of those people because you're young and you're fit and you love running, unless you're a marathon runner or someone is sponsoring or paying you to run, don't, don't kill your, your skeletal system. Don't, don't kill your spine with, with too much of that. There is too much of a good thing. Um, be careful with your body. It is the only one you get. So I know that right now in, in, in that age group, you know, you're walking around and you're physically fit and you're slender and all of your joints are still supple and everything's great, you know, and you don't have any wrinkles and everything's great. Be careful with your body. You will not always be 
as pristine and still under warranty as you are right now. Um, and that comes faster than you think it will. So just be careful with your body. Uh, take, take your body seriously. Um, wear sunblock, especially if you are a fair-skinned person, but really it doesn't matter what your skin looks like, wear sunblock. Um, not just because it ages you. I mean, skin, skin cancer kills people, okay? And especially at risk are people like me with skin this color. You know, if your skin, if, if you are, if you, if you could buy cosmetics in a shade called Corpse and it would, and it would blend, wear sunblock, wear hats, wear sun hats. I don't care how stupid, bring it back, baby. Make it fashionable. Wear sun hats, cover your skin. Um, you can you just stay out of the sun, okay? If you were not born a beautiful shade of brown, accept that because turning your body into something that it's not because of sun exposure, that has very long-term and permanent consequences and sometimes deadly consequences for people. So that's my advice for young people is you can worship the sun, but put sunblock on and, you know, if, and, and just, if you don't take your body seriously, you are, if you don't take good care of your body, you are going to be so sorry and take good care of your teeth. Floss every day. So that's my advice. If I went back 20 years, yeah, there's lots of little things that I would change. There's a couple of big things that I would choose not to do. Um, but in the end, no, I think I'm pretty happy where I ended up. Um, and uh, there's absolutely no sense in regretting things that you've done because you can't do anything about it. All right, thanks guys. You made my really boring, painful back day so much better. I just, <laughs> I wanted to chit chat with you guys and I love it when there's a couple of people um, that I follow on Facebook, a couple of them are political and a couple of them are YouTubers and when they do these ask me anything kind of things, I thought those were fun. I was like, you know what, I want to do one of those today because really the only thing I felt like doing today was sitting here in my padded office chair and you know, so I was like, okay, and you guys, you guys came through. Thank you so much. All right. Love y'all. Talk to you again soon. Bye.